Fluorescent lamps are gas discharge lamps. Gas discharge lamp? Well, they are artificial light sources that produce light by sending an electric discharge through an ionized gas. Electric discharge is just the flow of electricity through an ionized gas, that is a plasma. So fluorescent lamps must also be ionizing the gas, right? How do they do this? Well, actually they make use of an argon and mercury vapor mixture. Before I explain that, let's see the different types of fluorescent lamps, like the compact fluorescent lamp, and the one which I'm holding now is a linear fluorescent lamp. They make use of uh, magnetic ballasts or electronic ballasts. I have an older version of a magnetic ballast and a modern version of a magnetic ballast. I do not have an electronic ballast right now, but I have these, uh, the electronic ballast which I have taken from the compact fluorescent lamps. So this is a circuit diagram of a fluorescent lamp. Here is the AC power source the magnetic ballast, a fluorescent lamp containing two tungsten uh, filaments, and a starter having a bimetallic strip and a capacitor. As the AC voltage of 50 or 60 hertz frequency flows through the phase wire to the magnetic ballast and to the fluorescent lamp and to the starter, a glow discharge is established in the starter which heats up the bimetallic contacts and makes them come in contact with each other therefore closing the circuit. During this time, when the circuit is closed, the tungsten filaments get heated up and they absorb the thermal energy supplied to them and release electrons uh, using thermionic emission. So these electrons are also known as thermions. And these thermions strike the mercury vapor atoms and excite them to higher energy levels. And when these electrons come back to the lower energy levels, they release energy in the form of photons, which falls in the ultraviolet region. And this radiation strikes the phosphorescent or the fluorescent coating inside the glass tube and is given out as visible light. So here we have an electronic component known as the starter, which consists of a capacitor and a bimetallic strip. This is the bimetallic strip and the capacitor. Alternating current is the current that is reversing its direction each AC cycle along with the reversal in the polarity of the voltage. So with each reversal of the current, uh, the electrons flow back and forth, back and forth and keep wiggling about a mean position. So the electrons don't really flow from one terminal of the fluorescent lamp to the other terminal. Instead, they just keep wiggling and since current is uh, defined as the movement of electrons, the circuit is completed and the current just flows through the circuit. Well now, what is the use of a magnetic ballast in this circuit? Here I have a magnetic ballast inside of which you'll find a laminated magnetic core over which there is a single copper coil. In electronic ballasts, however, you'll find a series of um, copper coils. Well, fluorescent lamps are negative differential resistance devices. That is, with time, the resistance decreases, therefore allowing for even more current to flow through. Connected directly to a voltage power supply, they, it would rapidly self-destruct itself and therefore it has to be connected to a magnetic ballast. What a magnetic ballast does is, it limits the current flow that is flowing through the uh, fluorescent lamp so that an arc is not established in the fluorescent lamp which would uh, damage it. So a uh, magnetic ballast is like an inductor. It stores energy in the magnetic fields that are produced around it. As the AC voltage increases in the positive direction, The current and the voltage, this is the positive direction, this is the negative direction. As it increases with time, the magnetic field produced by the magnetic ballast also increases. And once it reaches its maximum, the magnetic field produced also reaches the maximum size. starts to decrease from maximum to zero, 
the magnetic field also decreases to zero. As the AC voltage reverses its polarity and increases in the opposite direction, the magnetic field produced by the ballast also increases in the opposite direction. As this reaches, as the voltage reaches its maximum, the magnetic field produced also reaches a maximum in the reverse direction. As the voltage starts to decrease, the magnetic field produced also starts to decrease. And once the AC voltage reaches zero, the magnetic field produced also becomes zero. It acts like an inductor and also a transformer, a step up auto transformer. That is, it steps up the voltage to reduce the current flow and prevents any damage to the fluorescent lamp. Is the phase wire which is connected to the uh, wire, car wire that is connected to the magnetic ballast. And this is the neutral wire carrying the return current and it is connected to the uh, wire carrying from the second terminal. We will also insert a one-way switch in this circuit. So what we do is cut the phase wire into two and insert one terminal of the phase wire into one terminal of the switch and the other part of the phase wire to the other terminal of the switch. And we let the neutral wire remain intact. Please be cautious while handling with alternating current because um, you could get shocked. So always make sure that you cover the bare parts like that in a switch with an insulation tape. I have here the circuit diagram of a one-way switch. Here we see that the neutral wire is directly connected to the fluorescent lamp from the AC power supply and the phase wire is cut into two parts. One part is inserted into one terminal of the switch and the other part into the other terminal of the switch. I have not removed the starter and yet the lamp keeps glowing. This is because the starter is connected in parallel connection to the fluorescent lamp and the current prefers to flow through the fluorescent lamp instead of flowing through the starter. That is because the potential difference across the fluorescent lamp is less than the potential difference across the two strips. Therefore, establishing an arc in the fluorescent lamp is way more easier and the part of the circuit which is in use now is this. The starter is no longer a part of the circuit once the lamp has started. This is because it is using a gas called argon and argon is special because it reduces the potential difference once the lamp starts. Different gases have different effects. For example, sodium vapor lamps use sodium gas which releases the orange-red light. Whereas fluorescent lamps make use of mercury vapor which releases ultraviolet radiation it is converted into visible light on striking the phosphorescent coating. Fluorescent lamps also make use of argon gas. Argon gas is especially useful because it's a noble gas and it does not react with any other components of the lamp. And it also acts as a buffer gas, that is, it protects the electrodes from reacting and extends the lamp life. Argon gas is especially useful and is preferred over krypton and xenon, the other noble gases, because argon gas reduces the potential difference across the two uh, terminals of the lamp and allows the current to flow through the lamp. Well, I think this circuit is incomplete, right? Right, I have not installed the starter. You can see that it does not glow when the starter is not installed. We saw that the fluorescent lamp was flickering before it started. 
That is because it was using an old magnetic ballast and these old magnetic ballasts caused them to flicker and produce that audible uh, humming noise. And we also saw that it was flickering after it started. This is because of two reasons. One is that when the AC current was flowing through the starter, a glow discharge was established in the starter, right? That heated up the contacts and, uh, and made them come in contact with each other. So the circuit got completed then and there. At that time, the magnetic fields are rising and falling in the magnetic ballast. When the glow discharge gets extinguished after a second or two, the contacts uh, cool and open and the magnetic field produced by the ballast collapses immediately, which causes the potential difference or an inductive kick across the two terminals of the fluorescent lamp, which causes the flow of electrons in it. Therefore, if the glow discharge is extinguished at a wrong time and the magnetic field that collapsed in the ballast was not of the maximum size, the required potential difference is not produced in the across the two terminals of the fluorescent lamp and the lamp would flicker instead. And until and unless the maximum field collapses uh, so as to produce the required uh, potential difference, the cycle keeps going until it lights, of course. The second reason why it was flickering is that during the start of condition, the tungsten filaments might not have gotten heated up that is, they might not have taken the required thermal energy to release the required number of electrons, which would then strike the mercury vapor atoms and excite them to higher energy levels, which would then come back to lower energy levels, giving out energy in the form of photons, which fall in the ultraviolet region, which can then strike the fluorescent coating inside and is given out as visible light. So, if the required number of electrons are not produced, the lamp would then flicker again until and unless a continuous stream of electrons are released. And thank you for watching.